So to start with, um, Fiber Optics 101, uh, as everyone knows, I'm Ben Homlich. Um, I've been working in the fiber industry for a better part of uh, 15 years. Um, and I have my RCBD certification and fiber optics installer. So that's kind of what that's uh, talking about there in those uh, after my name. So let's just get started and uh, let's get started and talking about fiber optics because I'm sure that's all what you're all here ready to listen to. All right. So our first slide here, we're going to talk about what is uh, optical fiber. What is fiber optics? Well, plain and simply, it's extremely thin strands of pure glass, and it's designed to transmit data in the form of light signals over long distances. So as you may be familiar with copper, it uses electrons to transmit that information. Simply uh, fiber optics gl is glass, and it uses photons. Uh, to transmit that information. So that's kind of uh, in a really high, high overview, a fiber optic uh, cable. So now let's kind of go into some of the benefits uh, of fiber optic cabling. What are some of the differences uh, in fiber optic cabling? And we can kind of maybe relate this to uh, what the differences might be versus copper cabling. In this next slide, we can see some of the differences and some of the benefits is you get very high data rate and you get very wide or high amounts of bandwidth. And so that's very important as um, internet speeds and online computing, cloud computing, things like that start to continue to grow. Um, that wide bandwidth, that higher data rate, it becomes very, very important. The other really, a wonderful benefit too is that uh, it has immunity to things like EMI and RFI. And those are things that you experience and have issues with on a copper cabling side. So if you, for instance, if you were to run your copper cabling too close to um, an electrical wire and it's not given enough distance, uh, you can get that RFI or EMI um, interference from that copper cable. Well, that's not the case. That's not, that doesn't happen in optical fiber because it uses glass. It's not using copper. It's not using a metal. The other uh, benefit as well is uh, no ground loops. So again, in copper uh, cabling, you have the issue with, with ground looping. That's not an issue with fiber optics. You also have very low attenuation. Uh, and that's uh, something we're gonna talk about a little bit later on. But that is very important um, in terms of being able to uh, send data longer distances and have less loss of data. Longer distances is something we kind of just touched on, but that's a real, real benefit and positive to fiber optic cables. Multi-mode fiber cables, uh, typically two to five kilometers. Um, now, most fiber optic systems, um, and actually the entire fiber optic industry, and this is something to kind of keep in mind, uh, it deals everything in kilometers and meters. So it's kind of the international um, way of um, determining that. So it, to wrap your head around it, um, you know, you, you could do a conversion there, but two to five kilometers uh, on multi-mode, sometimes a little bit longer. And then um, on single mode, we're talking over 25 kilometers uh, with single mode. And there's some reasons um, that we'll go into a little bit later as to why the differences and uh, why multi-mode is shorter than single mode and why single mode is longer than, than multi-mode. The other big advantage is we have a very small cable diameter. Um, if you look at some of the high count copper cabling, uh, some of that is it's, it's really large in size. Um, you've got maybe hundreds of copper conductors in there. It's very heavy and, um, and, and the diameter is very large. Well, that's not the case with, uh, with fiber optics. Um, we can make that, that can be made in a much smaller cable diameter. So it's much easier to install um, and there's more room for it to fit uh, in the cabling installation. Again, no shock hazard because it's uh, glass uh, transmitting light. Uh, the connections are very secure as well. It's very hard to tap fiber optic cable. And then the life expectancy um, of fiber optic cable has proven to be uh, longer 
than copper or coaxial cable. So there's a lot of benefits here to fiber optic cabling um, in terms of uh, what we've seen in the past with copper cabling versus uh, fiber optic cabling. So let's move on to the next slide. So here we're gonna talk about um, the wavelengths that fiber optic cables operate in. So if you think about wavelengths, it's, uh, or light for that matter, we have different uh, lights that we can see. For instance, a, a rainbow, right, is a visible light. We can see all the different colors. Well, actually fiber optic cables operate in that same uh, spectrum, however, in a much, much higher uh, wavelength, spectral wavelength. And that's, and that's under the infrared or invisible spectrum. Now you might be familiar with like your television remote control. When you point your remote control at the TV, uh, you can see that it's changing the channel, but you don't actually see anything happening. Well, that's because that's also using uh, infrared energy um, at a wavelength of 940 nanometers to make that channel change. So that actually, uh, remote control actually falls into the same wavelength category as uh, fiber optic cabling. So fiber optics uh, have various wavelengths from typically 850 nanometers all the way up to 1550 or 1550 nanometers. And that's basically the spectral length that is used to uh, send signals over that fiber optic cable. Okay, so that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview um, of what's happening and how that information is getting from point A to point B. It's using a wavelength, it's using light on that infrared and visible light spectrum. So next let's look at uh, the three main components a fiber cable. So we so fiber optic cable has three main components. Uh, there's others obviously, but the three main components to a fiber optic cable is the core, the cladding, and the buffer. So these each individually perform uh, a specific uh, uh, job in in the components of the fiber optic cable, but the the core and cladding uh, specifically. Uh, have a very unique uh, so, sort of job to do. And uh, we'll go into that uh, as well a little bit more uh, as, as we move along. Um, so one of the things to point out, we'll cover it a little bit more again in, in another slide, but one of the things I want to point out is uh, the core size of uh, a fiber optic cable can range anywhere from uh, 50 microns on multi-mode up to 62.5 which is um, pretty small, very, very, very small. And in single mode, um, anywhere from eight to 10 microns, which is extremely, extremely small. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like in relation to uh, something that you might be able to uh, think about in terms of what, what really are, is a micron and what is what is the size of, of that core. So if we look at that, uh, we talked about that a little bit just now, but single mode core size uh, typically averages about nine microns. So we talked about between eight to 10, nine microns is, is really the typical size uh, of most single mode cores. And a multi-mode core uh, features more than likely, uh, 62.5 was kind of the um, a little bit older multi-mode core sizes and the newer multi-mode core sizes that uh, most multi-mode fiber optics use is now the, a 50 micron uh, core size. So in the image there too, you can see a little bit more of what a fiber optic cable uh, consists of broken out. So as we mentioned, it has uh, the core, it has the cladding, uh, we have the buffer, and we have some sort of strengthening material. Usually it's aramid yarn uh, or Kevlar is another term for it. And then we have the jacket and that can be PVC or uh, various different uh, types of uh, components depending on uh, what's needed. So as we talked about kind of those different sizes, uh, multi-mode versus uh, single mode, I think we can think about this. A single mode cable is typically nine microns. If you think about your hair, a human hair, 
A human hair is typically 70 to 90 microns in size. So we can think about that. Think about how small that single mode core size is. 70 to 90, your human hair, you're talking nine microns uh, for a single mode core size on the fiber. So uh, a micron uh, can be defined as a unit of length and it's equal to one one millionth of a meter. So that's, that's how small it is. It's extremely, extremely small. And that's what's being used uh, to transmit uh, data down that optical fiber. In the next slide here, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, optical fiber. It can be thought of as kind of a light pipe. Uh, it's basically used uh, as a pipe to transmit photons from point A to point B, or light. So it's usually made of uh, silica glass. That's the component that is uh, typically used to make it. Um, light, as it's being transmitted, travels down the inside of the core. And as it does that, uh, in, in specifically in multimode fiber, that light is bending down the core, back and forth, kind of in a bouncing type of scenario. And, and as we talked about, light uh, is what is used to carry that signal down the optical fiber. So that gives you kind of a quick uh, idea, an overview of, of how it's transmitted uh, down the optical fiber itself. So now let's go into a little bit more detail, uh, specifically what it what it looks like in multi-mode and in single mode fiber. Because there are two there are two different ways of transmitting uh, the light down the down the core of the fiber. In this next slide, we're going to look at uh, multi-mode fiber. So here we can see that uh, multi-mode means uh, Latin for path. It means, uh, so we have multi paths as the fiber transmits uh, down the core. And those do so in, in different modes. And so one of the things that is interesting and, and that uh, you have to be mindful of when you're thinking about uh, multi-mode is those signals can transmit from one end to the other, but, that, but they can arrive at different times. And that can cause a signal to uh, spread out and, and weaken. And that's kind of where we talked about uh, earlier and mentioned that word attenuation. Uh, and that's where that comes into play. So we may come in uh, a real clean signal, as you can see um, over here on the left side. But as it transmits down the fiber optic, it spreads and the signal begins to decrease a little bit. But the difference between uh, a multi-mode fiber and a single-mode fiber is the way in which uh, that it transmits. So this means that a pulse of light uh, will spread out as it travels along the fiber. Uh, this pulse uh, spreading is due to different modes along the fiber. And we can call this or is known as uh, what's called modal dispersion. And so if pulses of light uh, are put into a fiber that are too close together, uh, that can cause uh, more, dis more dispersion or more light to kind of uh, get lost in the signal. So that's one uh, factor too uh, in multimode fiber that uh, has uh, designers of it have to be mindful of. Okay, so there's uh, kind of a quick overview of how it works um, with multimode fiber. So if we go on to a single mode fiber, a uh, similar idea, it travels down the optical core, but it travels in a single path. So that's why we call it single mode fiber. So there's only one mode, and so no signal spreading happens at this time. So as you can see, the information comes, uh, leaves the transceiver or the uh, transmitter, uh, comes through the fiber optic cable, and gets picked up by the receiver uh, with virtually very, very little loss. So single mode fiber, it's, it's, it's a common type. It's a uh, three mode fiber is used to transmit over uh, very long distances. That's typically uh, the application uh, for it. A single mode fiber um, is also a single strand of glass and it's used to transmit a single mode, as we mentioned, ray of light. 
So you might ask the question, well, why don't we always just use single mode fiber then? Because it seems to be much better. Well, um, the answer to that is true. Uh, in most cases, it is much better. better. However, the big varying difference is, is cost. Uh, and not cost specifically to the cable itself um, between multi-mode and single mode, but the components that are required uh, to actually transmit that single mode over the fiber. The uh, transmit transmitter and receiver costs are extremely, extremely expensive uh, because of the uh, photodiodes, the, the different components that they need in order to get that signal uh, for the, uh, down the down the fiber optic cable for those super super long distances. So that's one of the big reasons uh, why that would be the case. Okay, so now we got a, kind of an understanding of uh, differences between single mode and multi mode. Now we're going to talk about some of uh, the aspects of what's happening inside the fiber. Uh, what what creates some of the um, reflections, what creates what's called refraction, um, what are the, uh, what are the kind of the, what's the theory kind of behind uh, fiber optic cabling? So here we want to look at uh, refraction. So that's kind of a new term, right? Refraction basically is the bending of light rays when it passes at an angle from one medium into another in which it speeds, it speeds are different. So basically, you can think about it uh, like this. You may have um, looked at um, in a lake, for instance, and your eyes look down and you see a fish, and maybe you tried to grab that or you tried to scoop it up, but it was actually slightly skewed or slightly off. Well, that's because what's happening there is that image is being refracted differently at the angle that you're looking at it. And you can think about that similarly with the refraction of light. As the light bends, as the light enters one medium to another, it slightly bends or slightly curves, and it causes that image to uh, look slightly skewed. So there's various different things that um, you know contribute to this, but that is basically uh, what refraction is in fiber optics. And this is something that has to be um, considered when, they, when fiber optic cabling is being designed. So we can think of um, an example, uh, the index of refraction, for instance, of water is 1.33. And all these different surfaces, all these different uh, materials have different indexes of refraction. Uh, the index of refraction uh, in a vacuum uh, is, is one, and then everything else is kind of um, laid out from there. So water is 1.33, but a diamond is 2.417. So you can see that you get a lot more reflect, refracted light off of a diamond, you know, when you kind of angle it and it shines versus what is refracted from a water because the higher that number, uh, the, the more refraction uh, you're going to get. So this is a this is a lot of there's a lot of mathematical equations that go into calculating this stuff, um, but that's uh, basically uh, one key component to think about uh, when designing when so, when one is designing optical fiber cable is is, is this refraction. So the next thing we want to look at is the, the index of refraction. So we talked about what refraction is, and different materials now have different indexes of refraction. And fiber optic cabling is, is no different. So the core of a fiber optic cable has a slightly lower index of refraction than the cladding of the fiber optic cable. Uh, excuse me, it ha has a slightly higher refractive index than the cladding. So this means when uh, light is getting shined along the core, and it's striking the cladding, then that index, that, that uh, light is then being reflected back into the core. And that's really um, the whole physics behind uh, fiber optic cabling and how that light is able to get transmitted uh, down the core. It uses refraction, and it uses what's called this index of refraction, 
and the differences between the core and the cladding having different indexes of refraction allow that light to bounce and, and get sent down the fiber optic cable. It's kind of like if you um, if you shine something uh, you know through a hose um, or a let's say a little a little glass light pipe or something. If you have if you if you shine that at the right angle, you can actually see it moving down uh, that that piece of glass. That 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 brings us to kind of the next point. That means that what we're doing here is we're putting it at a specific angle and that angle is considered the the acceptance angle and so when light is uh, shined through your uh, core of your fiber optic cable it has to be done at a specific angle if the angle is too too great then you're going to lose your light and if the angle is not enough it's going to eventually just dissipate so that's that's very important, and that's how we can that's what we can see here in this image is we have this acceptance angle um, that is used in terms of uh, the transceiver transmitting that light down the core. Now all fiber optic cabling um, is designed and has a specific acceptance acceptance angle uh, acceptance cone that's allowed to uh, use is used to actually transmit light down that fiber core. Uh, for the most part, they're they're mostly pretty similar, um, but they do somewhat um, they do somewhat change a little bit, and depending on how the the manufacturer um, constructs their glass. So basically, the numerical aperture or this acceptance cone of the fiber, it it can be considered as a rays launched outside the angle specified by the fiber's numerical aperture. What will happen is this will radiate modes of the fiber and a high core. So if you have a higher core index with respect to, to the cladding, that means that you'll have a larger numerical aperture. If you have a smaller core index re, uh, respect to the cladding, then you'll have a lower a numerical, numerical aperture. So that's where you would see differences between single mode and multi-mode. You have a much smaller numerical aperture, single mode, needed than in multi-mode, you need a larger numerical aperture. So that's kind of describing um, in the index of refraction, uh, what it means, uh, and the acceptance angle or the numerical aperture, both one and the same in terms of fiber optics cabling. So next we want to look at uh, tonal, total internal reflection. And that, again, uh, goes kind of hand in hand with this uh, refraction conversation that we're, we're talking about here, the theory of refraction. But what this is, is the term used as light is transmitted down an optical cable. So as we discussed uh, previously, your core here is going to be a different index of refraction than your cladding here. And what that allows to do is when that light is transmitted through the core, it's able to reflect down the fiber optic cable, kind of as you're seeing here in the image. And that's considered total internal reflection. It captures the light transmitted in the optical fiber and it confines that to the core of the fiber. And that again is kind of a key core component to what makes fiber optic cabling work. So that's in total internal reflection as a subset of refraction and the index of refraction. So now we want to get into another uh, aspect of fiber optic theory, and that is um, what happens when we have reflection or return loss. So this is another uh, sort of a characteristic of fiber optic cabling is we have what's uh, called reflection or return loss. And basically what that means is it's when a ray of light bounces off of the interface of two materials. So we can think about this uh, in, in our terms in fiber optics. It basically be when two connectors are connected together, you have two surfaces and between them you have air, even though they're mating uh, pretty tightly, you still have some air and that creates reflection or return loss. 
The other things that can create it are, um, are splices, uh, although very, very low reflection, depending on the type of splice, uh, you can also get a return loss uh, in that type of a scenario as well. Uh, reflection is basically the, the information that is uh, received back to the test equipment uh, in terms of uh, how much uh, light was dispersed or scattered after those two surfaces uh, met in, in, that, in that gap between them. So that's basically, um, that's basically reflection and return loss uh, in, a, in, a, in a basic overview. And this is something that affects fiber optic cabling. So what are some of the things that can improve reflection as it relates to our products? Well, we have what's uh, we have some really good uh, polishes on our fiber optic patch cords, for instance. Um, we have the UPC polish on our multi-mode uh, fiber optic cables and, and, and our single mode fiber, fiber optic cables. And that's called an ultra physical polish. And so the, the benefit there is that the better that polish is, the better that those two connectors will mate up and the less reflection you'll have received back at the test equipment. Uh, the other type we have is what's called APC or angled physical polish. So with an APC, you have even less reflectance and the reason is, is because the end face or that fiber optic uh, core um, ferrule is actually designed at an eight degree angle. And so when those two eight degree angles meet up, they're slightly angled. And what, caught, what, what happens there is that that light is able to transmit through those two surfaces uh, in a much easier way with a lot less reflection because it's not a flat surface to surface contact. It's slightly angled at that eight degrees. And so with our products, the UPC and the APC, um, really we can say uh, we have the superior product there in terms of reflection. And we're going to also uh, have a lot less uh, return loss reflection uh, in our, in our uh, fiber installation. Those two terms kind of go hand in hand. When you look at a spec sheet or uh, you look at uh, information uh, for a fiber optic system, you'll see reflection or you might see return loss. Uh, those two uh, typically will, will mean the same thing in terms of the, the numbers that they provide. Now our APC uh, connectors typically um, provide what's called a, a minus 60 dB. So all of these uh, expressions um, are expressed in uh, decibels, dB. And the higher number you go in the negative, the better your reflection is. So that's interesting, right? It kind of seems opposite. But the, the higher you go in, the, in your negative um, value, uh, the better your reflection is. So when you're looking at a spec sheet or something and you see the APC uh, return loss or reflection loss, and it says minus 60 dB, that's really, really good. Or if you look at a UPC and it says um, minus 45 to 50 dB, uh, it's not as good as the APC, but it's still really, really good. Because if you have a just a PC, physical contact, not a UPC, you might see it in the you know, 20 to 30, minus 20 to minus 30 dB range. So as that number gets lower in the negative, uh, it, the worse the reflection you're gonna have the number higher in the negative, uh, the better reflection you're going to have. So that kind of explains a little bit on the reflection and return loss uh, that, gets a, that you might experience in fiber optic cabling. So the next slide, we want to look talk about attenuation. So attenuation, uh, very similar like in copper uh, systems, is going to be the amount of light or energy lost in the transmission link. And this again, too, is expressed in, in dBs, uh, like, like most everything is uh, in, these types of, um, in these types of calculations. So as the signal source sends the uh, information down the fiber optic cable, as it's picked up by the receiver, you're going to have loss. Uh, and that's just a matter of fact, just like with copper cabling, there's going to be attenuation. There's going to be things that maybe scatter the signal. There's going to be slight impurities 
in the fiber optic cable and in the core itself that could cause scattering and, and, and loss of that signal. But ultimately, um, it's pretty low in terms of attenuation in fiber optic cabling. And the way that it's expressed or the way that it's um, factored in is a specific dB loss per kilometer. So for instance, um, if you're working with um, a multi-mode cable and you're using um, a, a transmitter that's transmitting at, at 850 nanometers, uh, like we talked about earlier on in, the, in that uh, spectral wavelength, uh, you have up to a 3 dB of attenuation loss up to a kilometer of cable. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit uh, that you have there in terms of loss for that long, long distance of cable. The next thing we want to look at is somewhat similar to attenuation, but it's more considered and more talking about the physical components themselves and, and what, those, uh, what, what kind of losses can be had in those, and that's called insertion loss. So insertion loss is the measurement of light that is lost between two fixed points in the fiber. So as we look at the picture here, um, we can see our transmitter at one end, and we can see our receiver at the other. And everything in between is our fiber cabling connectivity system. So that could be a connector. It could be a splice. Uh, it could be another connector. Uh, this, this is showing actually a splice here and at the other end, connectors. So at each of those points, uh, you're gonna have what's called insertion loss. Now you have reflection, which we talked about earlier, and that's that reflection that gets picked up, but you also are gonna have an insertion loss related to every single connection point in that fiber optic system. Those are those numbers that you may have seen on the spec sheet, like 0.7 dB, 0.75 dB per, per connector, and 0.3 dB per splice. And, and those are all standards-based. Uh, those are all um, can be found in the TIA standards for fiber optic cabling. But that is a factor that also has to be uh, calculated in uh, when figuring out your, your fiber optic system and how much loss is gonna be over that fiber optic system. So insertion loss, uh, very important as well. The lower the uh, insertion loss is on our connectors and our splices, uh, the overall better performance that we're going to have. So for instance, the standard says 0.75 uh, dB per connector loss uh, on insertion loss. We, we, we a lot of times might see uh, 0.3 dB, or we could even see as low as 0.2 dB. If that's a really good connection and it's mated well to the uh, connector on the other end, you might see it. The other thing is sometimes uh, products are spec'd to have low loss insertion loss. So for instance, um, uh, you know, at True Fiber, we're looking at some products right now um, that they could have up to a 0.75 dB loss per the standards, but we're looking for better than that. And we're asking for a a 0.35 or better dB loss. And that's really important, specifically when you get into uh, data center applications and things like that, where uh, insertion loss is, is really important to keep that figure as low as possible. So that's kind of an overview um, of the, the theory and kind of some of the, the different losses and things that we might see in, in fiber optic cabling. And now we want to kind of uh, segue into uh, fiber cabling and, and different connector types. So this will kind of give us an idea of, um, of the physical, of what, what fiber optic cabling actually looks like, um, the different connector types that are used out there, so that you can kind of familiarize yourself uh, with those. So fiber cabling and connector types. So we want to look at first this slide here because this gives us kind of an idea of the different type of fiber optic cabling that's out there. So if you look all the way to the left here, OM1, that was kind of the first uh, version of multi-mode fiber, OM1. If you look at uh, OM2, as it increases, um, that core size 
uh, changes. So here we have a 62.5, as we talked about earlier. And here we have a 50 micron. So that's that size of that core that we talked about earlier that, that, that the light actually transmits down. We're getting a little bit smaller as we move in to the big to the uh, uh, different types of multimode fiber. So OM1 and OM2 and OM3 and OM4 and OM5, all different uh, versions of fiber optic cable simply means optical multimode version one, version two, version three, version four, and version five. And I'm sure they'll come out maybe with a version six and seven, very similar to what you're seeing in uh, copper cabling, CAT3, CAT4 actually, but it didn't quite make it, CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6, CAT6A, CAT7, CAT8, all the different versions. Well, it's very similar on the fiber optic side, uh, multi-mode. But on the single mode side, uh, what's pictured here is OS2. Now they did have an OS1 version uh, that first came out, um, but now we're but now 90 percent, well, probably 99 percent of the fiber optic cabling that's sold out there uh, is OS2, and so that's optical single mode uh, version two. And so one key component and one real important thing to to notice here. Um, is the coloring. Fiber optic cabling is, is very dependent on, on coloring and there's specific color codes um, that are associated with your fiber optic cabling. Now, we're not gonna go into it real specifically in this training, but maybe in some future trainings, we'll go into some of the fiber optic color coding and talk about that. But real quickly, OM1 cable typically is your orange color. Well, OM2 cabling was also your orange color. OM3 cable, they finally decided, well, let's switch to a different color because we might confuse them. And that's what was happening. You had a 62.5 micron core connecting to a 50 micron core between OM1 and OM2, and that was creating a lot of issues. So they said, let's change the color, and they did. They went to aqua with OM3, but then they went to aqua with OM4. What's going on? Did they not learn their lesson? Well, the same thing started happening, although the core sizes are the same, so you don't really see much uh, la loss or issues with it. Uh, there are some characteristical differences between OM3 and OM4, and so it can affect slightly uh, your transmission and your performance. So what happened was, uh, the European standards body actually released uh, what's called an OM4, uh, but in the violet color. And that was really to be able to differentiate uh, the difference between OM3 and OM4. And so you may notice that um, at True Fiber, um, we're featuring that violet uh, color pr uh, predominantly right now in the OM4 product. Uh, we are going to look at the Aqua and the OM4 as well, just because um, the standards, uh, the US TIA standards call out Aqua as the, as the main product, as, as what's supposed to be used. But the Violet, nonetheless, is getting uh, adoption. And where most of the adoption is happening is in the data center applications. So if you, uh, if you, if you ever walk into a data center, uh, you may see a lot of uh, that Violet uh, that violet OM4 cabling. And then they moved into OM5, uh, which is that lime color. So they, they finally changed the color uh, on that one, which was good, making it differentiate and different. Even though the core size is the same, uh, with the li uh, lime, you have uh, some other really um, impressive um, characteristics. It's able to do what's called um, DWDM and CWDM. Uh, those are some terms that we won't get into, but it has a, a much a higher capacity in terms of what it's able to do. And then OS2 single mode fiber. Um, single mode fiber has pretty much always been yellow in color, and that's the differentiator for single mode is the yellow. Now let's get into connectors, because we have a lot of different types of connectors as well. So the most common connectors are going to be your SC connector, your LC, 
in your MTO or MTP connector. So that's really um, what we're most commonly seeing uh, out there in fiber optic installations. And really the LC and MTP MPOs are, are even taking that over uh, versus the SC. The SCs you're seeing a lot still in uh, fiber to the home applications um, where uh, that's, that's what they're using. It's still the standard. Uh, SC is what's called out in the TIA standard, uh, but LC and, and then MPO and MTP, well, MPO and MTP is kind of a different character in itself, but LC is one of the more popular ones out there. And the reason is, is because of its very, very small form factor. Uh, you can get a lot of density um, with using that connector. So the MTP connector stands for a multi-fiber termination push-on. And the, and the MPO actually and MTP connectors, they're actually the same connectors. It's just the difference is the MP, MTP, uh, which is a trademarked um, product of uh, US Connect, a company called US Connect, a little higher performance. Um, the engineering is a little bit better on the mechanical and on the optical performance side. So that's really uh, the difference, MPO, MTP, in terms of do they, can you mate two of those together and will they work? Absolutely. Uh, you just see a little bit better performance on the mechanical and optical side of, of the MTP connector. Uh, the SC um, connector comes in various different types. And uh, we're going to ask a question here and we'll see if uh, somebody may be able to answer this. And let's get somebody uh, maybe that's not uh, Don or Martha or Nikki to answer this question and see if maybe they uh, can answer. If not, one of you guys can, no problem. But what kind of connector type is this? Who might be able to answer that? And uh, you can just kind of shout it out there if you want. I think I have an idea. Okay, John, go for it. Is it SC? Yes, that is correct. It's SC. And so um, what else do we know about this connector? You're, you're right, it's SC. Um, but it has, and we haven't really touched on this yet, but maybe somebody might know this already. Uh, that color that it's showing there, green, that, that indicates something. Does anybody know what that indicates? Go ahead, Don. Is the difference between the end base polish. That's correct. Versus AQC, yeah. Yes. So green on the connector end face always indicates an APC polish, angled physical contact polish. So here we have an APC polish, that eight degree that he mentioned, and it's an SC connector type, as, as we can see there. It's the same as the, as in the picture above. So that's great. Thank you. All right. So let's move on uh, to the next slide, and we're going to talk about uh, the difference between duplex and simplex fiber cables, because we also carry these as well. We carry a duplex and we carry a simplex. So the difference really is a duplex cable is two fibers at each end. And which, which being shown here is a LC, a single mode connectors. So duplex, two fibers at each end. And a simplex, simplex has simply one fiber at each end. So that's the de definition there uh, in, the, in terms of fiber optic cabling uh, between those two. So, when, but when we talk about duplex patch cords, so simplex, pretty simple, point to point. But in duplex, what we talk about is we talk about two different types of connectors on each end, or two, two connectors, I should say, not different, but two connectors on each end. And that's for a good reason. In majority of fiber optic systems, you have what's called a transmit side and a receive side. And those don't, uh, those don't basically match up transmit to transmit, transmit to receive. They need to actually go crossed. So in a fiber optic system, if you're transmitting on one end, it needs to be picked up by the receiver on the other. So that's what's called 
the the A to A fiber patch cable, or sorry, the A to B fiber patch cable that we see on the one down on the bottom of the picture here. This is 95% of the patch cables that are used out there, the A to B fiber patch cable. And simply what it is, is uh, if we look at the, from this way, we get the transmit going to the receive. And then on this side, we have the transmit going to the receive. And that's how it works in fiber optic cabling is you need to have a receiver and a transmitter. And both need to be detecting, the receiver needs to be detecting the signal, the transmitter needs to be transmitting the signal. In, the, in an A to A patch cable like you have here, you actually have the transmit going to the transmit and the receive going to the receive. Well, it doesn't make sense, why would we do that? Well, in some, in some applications where um, there's crossing that needs to happen, or if it's not a transmitter or a receiver in the sense of uh, duplex fiber uh, matching, then you might use this type of uh, application. And it could be like um, for transmitting, um, uh, like for instance, an HDMI signal over a patch cord. You might use an A to A, A, to A patch cable uh, because it's just needing a direct uh, signal sent from A to A and from B to B. But A to B patch cables, the bottom here is everything that we carry at True Fiber. All of our patch cables are A to B, transmit to receive duplex. So if it's a duplex patch cable, that's what it will be. Okay. Next, we're going to look at mouses. Give me problems here. Next, we're going to look at uh, simplex. And simplex is really pretty straightforward. Um, it's basically you're transmitting from side A to side B. Now, where this, where simplex patch cords are really probably very important and mostly used uh, are in fiber to the home applications, um, where a signal is just sent and it's, rece it's received at the other end, and it's not trans it doesn't need to transmit both ways, both directions. Uh, that's, that's a pretty common uh, scenario. The other scenario is for like maybe a CCTV, CCTV camera, um, and the camera just needs to send the signal to the computer at the other end to, to, to view it. Um, so those, those are a couple, of, a couple of, of things that we might use a simplex patch cord for. We also carry simplex patch cords. Uh, our simplex patch cords come in the SC and uh, LC variety. Uh, they're typically always most commonly single mode fiber. Um, not, too, not too often that you have that in a multi-mode scenario. Pretty much across the board uh, is gonna be single mode. So here we can uh, kind of look at um, single mode fiber um, defined a little bit. Okay, let's look at single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber as it relates to simplex and duplex. And this gives you kind of a, um, a better idea in terms of what's happening with this image here. So in this image, uh, we can see that a simplex is basically a car driving in one direction, and that's the only direction that it will go. And a duplex, you have it coming in both directions. So it's like a two-lane highway versus a single-lane highway. So that's kind of the difference there between a simplex uh, versus duplex. And again, uh, at True Fiber, we, we carry these different types of uh, patch cords, both in simplex and in duplex. Finally, let's look at fiber connectors and polish types. So we kind of talked about this uh, briefly in that little quick test that we, we asked, um, but before we got to this slide to kind of get an idea of, uh, of what maybe you understand about these. But we have really two main connector, fiber connector polish types. Um, there are some others, but really the UPC and the APC uh, are going to be the, the de facto standard uh, polishes for fiber optic cabling. So on the UPC side, which again stands for ultra physical contact, uh, you have those in a LC and an SC. 
uh, type. Uh, those are various different uh, types of uh, polishes that you might see. You you see it on ST and a and a FC connector as well. Uh, those are some of the other types of connectors out there, which we didn't get too much into because they're not as common anymore, but, but they are used. Um, but what's interesting between these two is that end face geometry that it talks about there. So on a UPC, you, you have what's called kind of a domed polish. Uh, it's, it's two flat surfaces with a slight dome mating together. And on the end face geometry of a APC, angled physical contact, you have an eight degree angle. And so when those two made up, you have an eight degree on one end and eight on the other. And as they mate, they kind of create a slight angle, which again, uh, you might remember uh, that creates that better return loss or reflectance loss in the fiber optic cable. And that's what we have in the last half of that slide here. On the UPC, typically 50 dB is 50 dB is kind of your standard on single mode uh, UPC, uh, which minus 50 dB reflected back to the core. But in APC, we see 60 to 65, sometimes even greater than that, um, return loss, uh, which gets reflected back to the core, which is really, really good, really high quality. So the APC, a much, much higher quality uh, connector type. So that kind of goes through uh, the slides in terms of different products, different theory, and kind of a, a, an overview uh, 101 of, of kind of fiber optic, uh, fiber optic cabling and, and, and the theory behind it. But now we want to kind of talk about um, the products that we have. And maybe we, what we can do here is really quickly um, do a quick little training exercise and ask the audience maybe if they can identify some of these. We may not go through all of them for lack of time, but um, maybe maybe a few of these to kind of see if you can identify. And this, this would be good for um, some of the uh, warehouse people too, maybe who have joined. Um, this will help them to kind of be able to identify the different types is when they're, when they're grabbing and picking uh, to know that they're grabbing the right product. So let's go with the first one. Who can tell me? what this is after your training here maybe you can tell me uh, what kind of fiber optic cable this is what kind of connectors are on it and whether it's single mode or multi-mode let's get anybody who's anybody out there who would like to comment jessica all right, I'll give it a shot. I've been staring at the True Fiber website for a while too. So, <laughs> um, so it's Aqua. So it's probably OM three. Good. Um, yep. It's an LC connector because it's got the little tabby thing. That's correct. And it's duplex because it's got two connectors on the end. You're doing and great. What else am I and missing? It, and is it multi mode or single mode? I don't know. <laughs> so you, you kind of, yep, there you go. Yep. You, so you kind of answered your question when you said OM3, um, optical multi mode, right? Cabling. So that's good. Okay. Excellent. Nicely done. So that she got it. Um, the other thing um, that that uh, you could pull from this is that it's um, UPC. So the polish on it is UPC. And, and we know that because uh, the connectors are not green. They're aqua, but they're not green. So if this had a APC polish on it, those connectors would be green. OK, let's do, um, I'm going to skip this one. Let's go to this one. Who can give us the answer to this one? All right. Don, go ahead. All right. This is almost unfair, but of course I know this stuff, right? <laughs> so <laughs> okay. it is single mode OS2, and it's using LC connectors at both ends. Uh, that is a duplex patch cord, and it's using UPC uh, end-face polish. 
And from that, I will shut up and not talk anymore. That's perfect. You got it. Spot on. So LC, UPC, OS2, single mode, duplex. Exactly. OK, so let's go to, an, oh, whoops. Well, just gave that one away. Let's go to, well, let's do this one, because this one's important. It uh, features a little bit different connector type. So who can, who can uh, name the connector type on this one if you didn't uh, already see it? Zach. That would be an SC connector. That's correct. Exactly. SC connector. So a little bit different in terms of how it looks, right? A little bit bigger. Um, the other thing we can pull from this is that it's duplex, right? Because we've got two connectors. Uh, we know it's single mode because it's yellow and it's blue and not green. So we know it's got a UC, UPC polish. Okay. Excellent. All right, let's go to that one we're going to skip. Who can tell me uh, what this one is? OK, I'll take a stab at it. All right, Nikki. Um, single mode, because it's yellow, so it's OS2. It's not the green connector, and so it's UPC. Um, what am I missing? Oh, uh, this is the part I always can't remember. Is it SC? Or it's LC. There you go. Yep. And one key factor on this one, specifically while we're looking at it. Oh, simplex? There you go. Exactly. So we got a simplex here, right? So all the others we were looking at were, uh, were duplex. This here is a simplex. But yep, you got everything right. Nicely done. OK, we're going to move to one that, OK. This is a good one. Let's, let's, uh, let's get this one here, and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of move past this for, 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 for uh, sake of time. Who can, uh, who can identify this one? John. All right, I'm gonna I might butcher this one. Is that a LC connector? That's correct. It's single mode. That's correct. Uh, simplex? That's right. What am I missing? One more thing. Oh, the connector. Oh, that's a LC. That's LC. You got that. That's correct. But one one oh. specific thing about this. Oh, the polish. Yep. Shoot. The color. What does the color tell us? Oh, thank you. Uh, is that A P C? That's right. That's oh. right. You yeah. got it. Thank you for nicely that. done. Thank you for the so, hint. Yep. So green, uh, APC polish, right? Well done. So LC, APC, single mode, simplex. OK, so we have a few more here, but I'm just going to kind of go through them. And we're going to get to um, the importance of cleaning fiber connections and talk about that a little bit. And that will kind of go into a little bit of our um, click cleaners that we have. So we can kind of identify those uh, and understand those a little bit. Cleaning is probably one of the most important, 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 can't stress enough, aspect of fiber optics. Because dirty connectors are the enemy of fiber optic installations. They really are. Because if you think about it, when we talked, to, when we talked about the core sizes previously, uh, you have like a you have such a small core size in single mode fiber, nine micron core size, that the slightest speck of dust can block the entire light transmission. And so you may uh, plug it in without cleaning it, and you're getting nothing through that fiber optic cable because it's simply dirty, and that super super tiny uh, nine micron core is being uh, blocked by some sort of piece of dirt. 
Other things that can cause it are finger oils, um, dirt on the fiber connector can spread to other connectors too. So if you plug a dirty fiber in, you could spread it to a, the, the connector that it's connecting to on the other end. So, so important on, in fiber optics is to always clean and inspect your connections. So some of the tools that are used to do that are fiber scopes as, as shown in the bottom right there. Um, and that's important to do every time that your fiber is connected. So if you pull that fiber connector out and then you're going, you go to pull it back in, guess what? It's a really, really good practice uh, for a fiber optic installer to clean that fiber connector again. And the reason is, is because it can pick up dirt from just floating around in the air little electrostatic materials can, can uh, collect and, and get stuck to the end face. So it's really good to inspect it. And if it needs to be, uh, clean it again. So it's very important. So here's a little illustration on fiber testing. Uh, as we mentioned, is all about cleaning and inspecting. So in order to get those really good reflectance values and those really good insertion values, uh, one of the key factors is that it's cleaned and inspected uh, very, very well. So what do we have to clean and inspect with? Well, we have our click cleaners. But before we talk about those a little bit, here you can see uh, an image, right? So on the right, you see that's the size of your human hair. And then next to it, you have the core size of a single mode fiber, nine microns. So you can imagine if something as small as your hair it gets stuck or a small speck of something that gets stuck onto the end face that fiber optic core, you can completely um, lose all your signal throughput. Uh, one of the key things that it mentions here is like dust in an office is typically between 2.5 and 10 microns. So if you get a 10 micron piece of dust on the end face, you could completely cover that core. So it's very important again that fiber optics are cleaned and inspected well uh, to make sure that uh, that they're they're not having any type of issues with with dirt okay so let's look at our click cleaners so here's the two versions of our click cleaners and again a question uh, for anybody who would like to answer uh, now not everybody maybe has seen these or Maybe not everybody has uh, looked at them to know how to identify them, but um, anybody who want, wants to take a stab at identifying which one is which here of our two click cleaners. We make one click cleaner in the uh, LCMU style, and then we make another one for the, the SC, ST, and FC uh, connectors. Um, the nice thing is they have two different colors, so once you know them, uh, you can identify them pretty quickly by which ones they are. Zach. Uh, the black one is the LC, and is it MU? You got yeah, it. The other one is SC, FC, yep. and something to ST. That's it. There you go. So those are the two click cleaners uh, that we currently uh, offer at, at True Fiber, um, the LCMU connector cleaner and the SC, ST, FC connectors. And as we grow our product line and, and look at other products, uh, there's other cleaners and click cleaners out there for like the MTP, MPO connectors as well um, that will more than likely uh, carry. Now, if we look at this next slide, uh, this shows us kind of the difference in how to use uh, the cleaner. So the click cleaner has a little plastic cap that goes on the end of it. Uh, as you can see in the right-hand picture. And that's what's used uh, to clean the actual fiber connector end face. So basically what happens is that little cap slides over uh, the actual ferrule of the fiber optic end face. And as you, as you press that clicker down, uh, it swipes the end face, uh, cleaning it, getting rid of any dirt and debris and things like that. Now, sometimes the click cleaner isn't gonna perfectly do it and that and that's gonna depend on how how dirty and maybe sometimes what happens is if you plug a fiber connector into an already dirty connector uh, and those two end faces are mating together uh, quite tightly uh, that 
we talked about earlier that dirt could transfer over to the other connector and then sometimes it can cause it to actually stick uh, onto the end face of that uh, core of the fiber of the cladding and core and that can uh, and that can sometimes require a little bit more in-depth cleaning but regardless of that most of the time um, the quick cleaner works really well uh, in getting the fiber optic cabling clean and then on the left hand side um, you would remove that little plastic cap from the cleaner and that end would be what you would uh, slide into the port uh, of the patch panel or keystone port of a jack to to clean the connector on the other side of that uh, of that port panel there so it can be used for both of those applications uh, just like that okay so what's next basically we want to look at some other products as we as we move forward in uh, in fiber uh, true fiber and some of the products that we're looking at next are uh, what we kind of talked about uh, briefly I think it was mentioned in our uh, town hall meeting um, true town that uh, we're looking to offer uh, MTP and MT MPO uh, array connectors array patch cords and those are simply patch cords um, that have multiple fiber optic cores in the in a single cable so for instance um, here's an image uh, that you could look at and this basically has 12 fiber cores in that single optical fiber cable and so you can transmit uh, much more amounts of data because each one of those fiber cores can can be its own uh, fiber transmission but it's in a single fiber optical cable and this is um, most commonly these connectors and patch cords are most commonly used uh, in data center applications uh, they're also used in enterprise as well um, but we find that uh, probably the majority right now uh, of the applications for this type of a product is is in data centers where really high high uh, throughput bandwidth um, is needed and they're they're transmitting 40 100 um, 400 gig uh, applications uh, within the data center. So uh, they make it in two different types. They make it in a, well, actually there's four different types, but the, the, the two main types are a 12 core connector. So 12 fiber cores in the connector. And then they also make it in a 24 core connector. So 24 fiber cores. And then the newer one uh, that they've worked on and um, US Connect, uh, again, that company, has produced uh, what's called um, an MTP connector, but with 16 cores uh, in the single fiber cable, and then another one with 34, 32 uh, in the other one, in, in, the, in the second one. So this keeps, keeps increasing. So the connector here is a little bit bigger than an LC, but really this connector here, uh, this MTP that can carry all these individual fiber optics, uh, fiber optic cables, like you can see here, this is really only not much bigger than an SC connector, it's slightly bigger than an SC connector, and you can carry all those fiber optic um, cores. Whereas, uh, like we saw an SC connector, if it's duplex, but it's always just one single core in the individual uh, fiber itself. The other thing is the diameter of the cable is only about three millimeters, so it's pretty small as well, and. Uh, lots of data can be transmitted over that so that's that's something that's coming down the pipe just wanted to give you guys a little um information on that and uh, i know it was it was talked about so we kind of wanted to just uh show that all right that's the end of fiber optics 101 i hope everybody enjoyed it um if you have questions um feel free to ask uh, we don't have a probably a ton of time for for answering questions but if you have any other questions along the way uh feel free to reach out to me um, email or Slack me. Uh, either way, if you have some questions about the training, if you have any questions about something you learned and, and you want some additional information, uh, feel, free to, feel free to reach out. All right. And so thank you very much uh, for joining. And I hope you guys were able to uh, learn some stuff from, from this first Fiber 101 training. Well done, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, ben.
and, and check out the fire check out the fiber form see what ben's been writing about uh when you get a chance to to complement what we learned today yeah nice job ben i didn't even feel like some unreal urge to like jump in and add something <laughs> <laughs> that's wow I'm, ben that's good i'm i'm impressed by that <laughs> we got don's approval awesome well happy Friday, thanks ben everyone. great job yeah, nicely Thanks, done. Thank you. Dance recital. What are you still doing here? Dave. Yeah. 